noise is a form of litter and it is sound pollution because we aren't really used to cars and horns and sirens and that kind of thing. It's something that has been developed and created over time and we have adjusted to it. Um, but does that mean it's like best for us? No way. My mom we used to have stacks of mail, like just stacks of mail. And so I would go through the mail. And I mean, I was smart enough to determine like, this is junk mail and this is real mail. And I would take all the junk mail and like put it to the side and put it in a recycling bin. And she would get home and like get mad and be like, why did you throw away all the mail, blah, blah, blah. Thinking back on that, now I'm like, man, that was me at a very young age starting to sort out materials and say like this is a need and this is it. I've been zero waste since April of 2014. This is my jar of trash right here. Um, this is four months of trash. Even though I'm down to a jar, I'm still considering like, oh, I really didn't need that tea bag that day. It's really cool being able to see that, especially in a clear, clear jar like that, because most of the times we throw things away and don't consider it at all. Um, we don't know where it goes and we don't have to consider what happens to it when it's gone. But being able to see this in a transparent jar like this, I'm always like looking at it like, mm, I could do better. I am a vegan by choice. Um, and there's several reasons why I'm a vegan, but one of them happens to be because the planet um, suffers the most because of agriculture, big agriculture. So monocropping um, and that kind of thing. But then also the um, livestock has a huge effect on the planet. I'm very conscious of how frequently I eat something. I know every day um, I eat a green juice in the morning. So when I go to the grocery store, I buy just enough cucumbers and apples and lemons to make the exact amount of juice before I make it back to the grocery store. When you think about a typical trash can, 35% of the trash can um, is kitchen scraps. And so that's like your banana peels and the ends of your cucumbers and that kind of thing. And so I am able to compost that. So instead of transforming my kitchen scraps into methane gas, which is an air pollutant, um, I'm able to turn it into nutrient dense soil, which then can be used again um, as like a circular effect. We are in a, a, a really, limbo stage where we want and desire things that aren't meant for us um, and so self-sufficiency um, is really the act of depending on ourselves um, and not needing the validity that um, a government or a corporation can give us to tell us that we are important or we exist um, we have to find those things within ourselves so knowing that we don't need anyone to validate validate our lives or our existence or our faces in their marketing campaigns like we don't need any of that it allows us to take ownership in in our own lives and the good thing about that in self self-sufficiency is that um, nature provides. Fort Negrita is a place where people are identifying themselves as nature um, and rooting themselves in nature, whether that's um, rising with the sun or paying attention to the moon phases and how that connects to their menstrual cycles or um, being outside and absorbing um, the air and the, the, the the songs that the birds sing, um, that's Fort Negrita. I started an online platform and that was the low hanging fruit for me, for me to be able to get out the vision of Fort Negrita, um, to really be able to start to tell people about um, an alternative lifestyle um, instead of trying to like beat up against a system that I don't believe in and don't want to contribute to. Instead, I'm creating a space, an alternative space for people. Thank you.
zero waste puts you in a position to think about what do you what are needs and what are wants. Um, a lot of the times, everything that even things that we think we need um, are really just wants. Um, they add convenience to our lives. If you think about Aboriginal people, um, most of what they did throughout the day um, when the sun was up was trying to figure out how to eat whether that was preparing food or foraging food, hunting, um, they were trying to figure out throughout the whole day how to eat and then at the end of the day they would eat and go to sleep and do the same thing the next day. It's been a spiritual journey for me, right? So when you think about trash and waste, right? There's this idea that trash is this dark, Thing that you hide from people. I mean, we put trash into black bags and then we put them into bins and it's illegal to go into other people's bins. And there's almost like the secrecy behind trash that we don't even know. But in, in many ways, we're holding on and creating this baggage for ourselves. Um, so it's not just material baggage as far as like trash. Like there's also like these mental and spiritual and physical things that we're holding on to when we, um, when we when we have ownership of trash so being able to not create trash has really been a liberating experience for me because not only am i not holding on to excess best baggage but then i'm also being more considerate and treading lightly on the planet and that is a really really therapeutic experience for me first thing is normalizing conscious habits like something as simple as bringing a reusable grocery bag to the grocery store you can no longer use the excuse i've left it in my bag my car i left it at home not out of that it's really a, an experience for me to be able to say this is something that i'm committed to and this is my way of saying thank you and um, showing gratitude to the planet for letting the sun rise every morning and providing me with rainwater and the foods that I eat. So yes, it's been an amazing journey to be a zero oyster. <laughs>